um, your rights and some of the things that they, these these unscrupulous business people, these scams that some of these unscrupulous business people try to put on us, um, you know, or if we will have some some scheme and some something that they 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 want to sell you. So um, one of the things that I hope that people would have taken note of, or one of the things that he would have informed you all about is especially those some of those car dealers who you know want to sell you a car and all those you know they, they don't have the the proper documents so they they, they would sell you the car and they didn't give you no transfer and all these different things and i was really really glad to hear um the police officer giving proper guidance on these things and informing the the population are there you know, if a man selling a car and he realizes that he doesn't have the proper documentation for the car, you know, do some background checks on people who you're going to be buying vehicles from. You understand? You'll be surprised that that same gentleman, most people he scam, when you just do a little check on Facebook, you know, a little background check you do on them and you realize that these people and they are not who they're purporting themselves to be. So I um, want to tip my hat off to Pastor Johnson and the team and Keep on informing the listeners and letting us know what we need to be aware of. Righteousness, they say, exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach. And sometimes we don't even understand. We quote things and don't understand what we're quoting. You understand? Do things the right way. Do things the right way. That's, that's what it says in the, the initial scripture. It says, righteousness exalts. So it means do the right thing and you will be exalted. But you want to do underhand thing, you're gonna find out the old my grandmother always say, be sure that your sins will find you out. But I didn't know that she was quoting a scripture when she says <laughs> I didn't know it was her Bible verse she used to be quoting, you know. So the Bible says, God says he put his word above his name. So if he put in his word above his name, and if his word says, Righteousness exalts, and sin is a reproach. Check yourself. Don't do any underhand things now. Do it the right way, and you'll get through. You'll get through in life. You understand? We want to get through in life every other way than the right way. So, without further ado, I have a guest in studio this morning with me. I want you to join me on Facebook. I'm seeing people already joining me on Facebook, so I want to say thank you to them who are already on Facebook with me and those of you on YouTube. Let me see what the YouTube is looking like. Ah, lovely, lovely. So join me on Facebook and on YouTube as I'm about to invite my guests to, in, to let you know who he is and what he's about and some of the things that he has been experiencing. I just have half an hour with him eh? because I have another sponsor segment that you all know that we're going to. And we have another guest too that's going to be joining us in a short bit. So you're going to link up with him on, on um, WhatsApp in a little bit. So, Trina and Tobago, without further ado, let me introduce to you my good friend, long... Hmm, people hear me say long friendship. Uh, and that's a good thing, eh? When you have long friendship, it says that you are... Uh, what the Bible says, you are a man who has, have shown yourself to be friendly. Mm -hmm, definitely. You <laughs> understand? <laughs> so, is it that gentleman who have known... Wow, boy. Can't even check the amount of years. <laughs> you know, before you're married. Yeah, you know, you're know, you real back in the day, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. Trinidad Tobago, I have a young man with me. Some of you would have known, heard his voice years ago when he had come um, with Mr. Dane Francois to do a promotion on a health drive mm -hmm. that he was having in Sandy Grandi. Definitely. Let's see, see how my brain do, <laughs> do, do, do. Forget. Very much there were some foreigners who came down, yes, 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 yes. and you all were doing some, you were doing yeah. eye tests, cataract yeah. surgery. Yes, yes, the program was entitled Hands Across the Caribbean. You see? Yeah, so yeah, you see yeah. what I ain't forget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctors from all over the world. People were getting free glasses. Yes, free services. No, okay, services. okay, okay. <laughs> so Your brain still firing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I tell my son, you know, I have a brain like Kylie Fonte you now. I remember, you know? You know? So today he's here to talk about a program that he's having. But before we talk about that, I want him to talk about his experience, coming out of an experience 
And uh, this is for all the religious people out there. It's, we're not targeting any denomination as, per se. If we, and I want you to put it in context. Very much so. Very much so. We're talking about an experience that people are coming out of. And let me tell you something. All unfair games does really play over, you know. Very much so. Mm -hmm. All unfair games does play over Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. So, this, half, this morning, I want you to sit back. If you are in your office space, again, good morning to all of you listening to me on your radio, on work. You have your radio on, your little YouTube, your little Facebook playing in the background. Let me say good morning to my good friend, Mr. Anslim boy. Anslim don't miss him. So... I want you to listen to what the young one has to say. Um, call a friend. Tell a friend to listen to the... Because I know that when after you all hear this testimony, you all realize that God... Christ said it to you know. He said God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. Mm -hmm. Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. I never hear him say he was worshipped me mm -hmm. as a no denominational name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's start, Pastor Francois. <laughs> My good friend and brother, Pastor Francois. Pastor Francois, I knew you from Faisabad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's where I originally knew you from. Yeah, that's where, that's where the Lord blessed me with my wife. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, of course. And um, you, you were sharing with me some time ago. I didn't even know that that my cousin Junior, mm. who lives in the UK, was the one who I came to embraced stay with. you. Yeah, well, I came to stay with when I came from Venezuela. To so talk to Trinidad and Tobago yes, about yes, your yes, experience. Yes, yes. Well, very much so. Um, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. It's good to be here, and. Um, so my journey has been that I've been a Seventh Adventist. Um, most of most of you know that yeah. because um, uh, several of the programs that I would have engaged in on a national level, I would visit several of the media houses to promote these activities. And um, I live a public life, so I am known. I, I know that I am known by many as a pastor with the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. However. Uh, during my journey there, I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I worked really hard um, as a minister with the church, and I did it with joy. And uh, some of my um, fondest memory in life is I, I owe it to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I owe a lot to the Seventh-day Adventist Church for mm -hmm. me being where I am today is as a result of the input that they would have made in my life. Right. And um, my, 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 well, my family, I'm a... Uh, fourth generation Seventh Day Adventist. Okay. And um, so are my family are Seventh Day Adventists. Okay. On my in law side, Seventh Day Adventists. Mm. So, I mean, any, any right turn and look is just, um, yeah. yeah, just, just Seventh Day Adventists that have really had um, my life was centered around. Um, but, I'm, but as I started to study more and more the, the scriptures, I realized um, I've been encountering some challenges. Okay. Such that. Uh, many of the doctrines that we, we, we teach and, and we held to, I realize it's, it's starting to... When I look at the scripture, it's not lining up the way I used to teach it. And, and let me tell you something. I, I knew the doctrines in and out. I am one of the evangelists um, with, with, with the con conference. I was one of the evangelists. I would have preached under those tents, crusades, mm. and, and led hundreds of souls to the church. So right. you had to know your stuff to yes, want to go out there and, and preach and yeah. that kind of stuff, right? So I really knew this stuff. And then I realized um, about four years ago that um, I said, let me go over some of these things, sharpen it up a bit, because I was looking to preach another, do another crusade. And the first um, doctrine I started to look at, I started to encounter some biblical challenges. And I decided I'm going to continue to study many of the doctrines and several of them that i went through i realized they really weren't lining up as i anticipated so i had a decision to make i had a decision to make um do i preach what what i um used to preach um because it represents the views of the church or or do i preach what god wants me to preach and um First thing I know for a fact, one of the things that we say um, in the Seventh-day Adventist organization is that the pastor 
is the custodian of the pulpit. Okay. It means, therefore, he has to guard what comes out of that pulpit and ensure whatever comes out from that pulpit represents the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. And I held, I held high to that ethical standard. So I, I couldn't see myself in violation of it. If, if no one could have entered the pulpit that I have uh, purview over to say anything different and contrary to the belief of the church, how then um, morally do I now do it myself? So I, I, I couldn't teach it um, what I now believe. And I'm very firm in what I believe is true right now. Okay. And, um, and then, of course, the opportunity in fairness was, was, was given to me by the leader of the church to, if, if I wanted to meet with other um, learned men and to discuss um, the doctrines to see whether or not that would change my, my, my mind. And it was a genuine um, effort by the leader of the church. But I indicated to him most humbly that I don't think it would work because um, my, my perspective, they wouldn't change to it. They, they wouldn't know, if, if, even if I'm right on one or two or three of them, I don't see the whole international church uh, because it's an international church going to change to it. And, 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 and more so too, they wouldn't be able to change because the church has an established prophetess in the person of Ellen G. White. And for each of the doctrines, she would have already had a vision from God that it is so. So to go against um, uh, anything that she says will, will, will indicate, well, she was not a right. prophetess. So, so I, I, I looked at the whole thing and I, I said um, it, it wouldn't be fair to, to go about it that way. So I essentially um, sent in my resignation. And having sent in my resignation, I um, I decided to go and start my own YouTube channel. Right. Um, and uh, to be able to explain... What you believe. Yeah, what, and let me just say this. Um, that action that I engaged in was an action of love, right? Because uh, the way I see it, if um, you're in a building, and, and a good friend of mine, you know, shared that with me, that analogy, and I love it. If you're in a burning building, with a lot of people burning in that building, and you find found a way to get out, mm -hmm. so that you are able to escape through a broken window, as the case may be, you are morally and spiritually obligated, once you're still within good health and strength, to try and go back and save as many as you could save. You don't just walk away from the scene and allow the rest to perish. Right. So that I felt that the, the good news that I now have that I had a moral and spiritual responsibility to share it with my friends and family who are still a part of the Seventh-day Adventist faith. Um, How no... was that? <laughs> well, let me just say, I'm going to explain that now. But let me just say that, um, so the YouTube channel is the medium that I use to, sh to share it. But there is no intention on my part to destroy the, the church or anything else, because if we could improve on the knowledge that we have, it, it's just only going to make the church better and stronger for it. So my intention has always been a noble one. By the more truth we receive, is the better we are for it. So I, but some would have seen it differently. And for the most part, they are, they are, they, they, the church is divided. You have um, those who are very angry, very bitter with me, for sharing my views. Um, many of them have the opinion that I'm being led, led by the devil. Okay. That, um, and I'm being demonized for it. Hmm. Um, I've lost friends, uh, many friends, and good relationships as a, result of, as a result of it. And I anticipated that anyway. And I, because I could see in any, any group, if you feel that you're... Your, your organization is being attacked, and that is perception, eh? Then you close ranks, and you try to consolidate, and you try to preserve what you already have, because most people don't like change. But, um, and I'm not upset with them for it, for even those who make the, the worst of comments concerning me. I just know that they are not, they don't have the light that I have mm -hmm. now on these things. And God in his own time, the Bible says the part of the just is like a shining light. Yes. A shining brighter. So it, in time, it would be revealed to many of them, providing that they remain grounded and abiding in the Holy Spirit. However, they are, on the other hand, you have many of them 
who would say to me, Pastor, I am so grateful that you were able to explain these things because I myself was struggling with these issues and now I am better for it and I, I feel so mo much more free in my salvation. I feel a greater sense of assurance of salvation. So essentially, I, I would have really shared with them. Now, now everybody may not agree on what I've said, but I'm essentially said that tithe and offering was old covenant, and the new covenant is free will offering. I, I know there are also evangelicals who wouldn't have a problem with that too, who believe in tithing. I essentially did say that Bible and Bible alone, in terms of the, uh, so that I didn't really believe that, um, Sister White, uh, we should see the scriptures through her, uh, through her lens, um, who is the prophetess of, of the church, and that, um, because I do know that there are many errors in our writings, so I, 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 I highlighted those things. Okay. I did share okay. with them that I don't think that the wearing of jewelry is unbiblical, right. that um, that could send anybody to hell as a result of um, using it, because they, they, they always paint the analogy of the the woman in Revelation who was um, yeah, the Halakna, the Halakna yeah. peeling, painted in, in makeup and jewelry and, mm -hmm. and um and when God made us, he didn't put those things on us, so I would yeah, worry yes, so and, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So, of course, that and all posed a serious challenge to them. And um, I, I also did explain about this one full business. Right, right that yeah. In terms of... Um, uh, you have to be a, a, you have to come into that fool yes, in order yes, to yes. be saved. The, the teaching is, is that the Seminary Adventist Church is the fool. Yeah. Another sheep that is not of this fool are yeah. all the other yeah. uh, Christian denominations so who would have to come and join the Adventist yeah. Church and then it would be one fool. So I, I didn't share that view. I, I shared that um, Israel has always been the fool and the and the um, other sheep that is not of this fool are the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. and they join together and become one church, one fool. Yeah. Both Jews and Gentiles. Right. And of course, that caused his own set of problems, too. And um, the most recently, I was sharing um, about the law, um, the covenant, mm -hmm. the, Ten Com the Ten Commandments. And, and so I was sharing with them that the Ten Commandments is old covenant. Right. And um, that we're under a new covenant, Beautiful. which is in Christ. Yeah. And um, but that caused a lot, of, a lot of problems because I indicated to them that... Um, I need to teach about the, the covenant and the law uh, before I could really zero in and really teach about the Sabbath. Right. And so where, they, where, where most folks saw me heading with that, they, they already know that I'm going to say that the Sabbath now is not, is not to be kept, uh, the Jewish Sabbath, in the, under the new covenant. So, I mean, I mean, that is the heart of the church. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I forget to make mention also, I did also say that I do not subscribe to a doctrine called the investigative judgment. Judgment, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. Um, the moving from the holy place yeah, to the in, in most holy. Yeah, to the yeah, most yeah, holy yeah. And, and that, but that atonement was full and complete at the cross. Right. But, but all of those things I, I really did not teach before. All of those things I was ignorant to up until about four years ago. Really? <laughs> Don't laugh at me, man. <laughs> People seeing you on camera, you know. <laughs> I remember when you met me. Yes. I told you. I told you. I said, I don't believe those things anymore. <laughs> you watch me like. Yes, it's true. It's true. What was your initial response? Yeah. Because said, you know me. Said, you know me as a youth. I said Google Map because we both um, had an interview here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after we were standing outside on the mm -hmm. street, Marvel Road, right here by the radio station. And we talking and Google telling me. I say, well, what's wrong with Google, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say, I had to bring back him on course, man. The man, yeah. the man has lost his way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after when you realize, when you realize. Yeah, that, yeah, that you were right and I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I, a big man must be able to admit right. uh, when he was wrong. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. I was wrong back then, you know. Hmm. And um, now that I, 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 I know this, what I believe to be true, I mean, I'm excited to share it with the world. I'm excited okay. to preach that gospel. And um, mm -hmm. trust me, Israeli is a, a freer, um, happier, lighter gospel. How has preach. your family been able to deal with this transition? Well, actually, my family was uh, more enthusiastic than me for us to, to press ahead with what we believe because it wasn't a case where um, they just taking it from me. But I don't have that kind of family. My wife, um, 
Paul and Crow. Yes, of course. Paul and Crow. Yeah, of course. Of Never course. eat meat. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they were vegetarians <laughs> and everything. Talk I mean, to me. I remember, her father is a of pastor course. too. You know, her father of is a course. pastor too. So, and so with my wife, I had you had to come real good. She's not going to. She's not gullible. So she has to study it herself to accept it. Right. And then uh, my elder son. Brilliant guy. He has to study it himself to accept it. They know that, and I have no problem with that because that's the people I want around me. I right. don't want no yes people around right. me because we, I'm not teaching my children to be like that. They have to be independent thinkers. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they were able to grasp and understand all of these things, they were like, what you waiting on? And I must say, it is a struggle. It was really hard for me because it took me that long to make that move. And um, man, Google, to be honest, I did a a 40-day fast okay. with um, uh, two other relatives of mine. So five of us would get up early in the morning and pray, and we'd fast about me making that move. And the, the intention is that I would develop the faith to leave um, after the 40 days. And Google, after that 40 days, I told them, no, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> See, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm being honest. I... I knew I had to leave, but I, I just couldn't. So we did another 40-day fast, back-to-back, -back, and it's in the second 40-day fast. I, I, I made that firm decision. Really? But my wife played, at, and, and, uh, and one of my sisters, a crucial role, because my wife told me, she said, men like to blame their wives for not being able to do the will of the Lord. She said, but you can't say that, because I'm telling you, if we have to lose our home or what have you because you are the main breadwinner, so making that move, we're going to be living every day by faith and not sure where an income is coming from. So she said, um, "You, I am prepared to live in the car. If, if you lose the house or what have you, so I'm letting you off the loose to let you know. If ever I told you that you disobey God and do not take a stand for him, you're not, you don't have me as company for that. I told you I'm willing to lose everything for you to serve the Lord and to do what you had to do. So when a wife tells you something like that, what do I go back and tell God? So I, 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 I had to take that stand, just take that bold walk of faith. Right. And since then, we, God has been good to us. We've been living by faith. And um, I, I, I do love um, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you know my heart. They are, some, of the, some of them are the most sincere worshippers you will find anywhere. But I know for a fact there are some truths that they need to have to, have, right. to, to understand to better. To. And, and it is only better for you. The more truth you have, because Jesus said, I'm the way that you and the life. So that the more truth you have, the more Jesus you are. Right, right. right. Beautiful. You know? Yeah, Beautiful. yeah. So now, with that, in, 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 with, with that ahead of us, you know, we decided that we're going to be having a conference. We're going to be having a conference coming up uh, to teach on the Sabbath. Right. So what I want to do, I know that we're going to get ready to go for the news, and I will give you um, 15 minutes extra no to deal with, with the conference. I want to say good morning to my good friend, um, Apostle Gardner, who is on the live. Good morning, sir. How are you? It's Apostle Gardner. <laughs> my real partner, too. You know? Yeah, that's my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do well together. And um, I want to say good morning also to Pastor Johnson, who is also listening. And I know that there are other pastors and bishops who are listening. Bishop Gary George mm -hmm. from Jesus Elam. I know that. Um, so there are a lot of other pastors that are listening. Um, and I know that they are listening because they are intrigued to hear about this transition that would have happened to you. Mm -hmm. Because they know my transition. Right. <laughs> they, they, they know about my transition. But um, I'll tell you something, eh? You see the first fast you do? Mm -hmm. And then you went back and said, hey, <laughs> you know what? Earlier, but I ain't going through that. <laughs> um, we were talking off here, and I think we could say this publicly, mm -hmm. that we were fanatics for what we believed. Mm -hmm. Right? Proper fanatics. Um, people talk about... Um, we We... We would lock all family members who are not, um, who were not a part of that belief. We would lock them off in the sense of when sunset reach, I want to talk with you. <laughs> we used to say, the Bible say, don't talk your own words. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, definitely. And lock them off. Mm -hmm. Have nothing to do with them until after sunset Saturday. <laughs> that is the level of fanaticism we operate under. Don't care what, 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 what you cook there. They go, there's super what in it. <laughs> and you would condemn your whole family in the name of a church and religion. And not understanding that it's, this thing is all about love. You understand? And um, we have done so much work that they will never get the youth to, young people will not do what we used to do for that, for that, that, that organization. And as you said earlier on, when truth come to you and you're ready to run back to pull out some people from the house, you understand? There are some people who will tell you, leave me, let me perish. Yeah, folks who are quite satisfied. Yeah, there are people who will always be happy to stay with the status quo, you know, because the status quo is 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 comfortable for them. Yeah, very much so. I heard T D Jakes made an uh, um, uh, illustration one time. You put a frog in boiling water, mm -hmm. you'll never know that that frog is is mm -hmm. burning up, you know, mm -hmm. only when they explode. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, brother. This is sometimes how God, God um, reveals himself to some people only when they're under pressure, you know. Mm -hmm. And they realize that what they believe for years haven't been able to come through for them. Mm -hmm. Then they react, but wait, now. Nah. <laughs> this ain't working. That didn't happen to you. What happened with you was that you went back to do a review. Yes, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and got a different one. I and got a totally different. <laughs> yeah. So that says a lot. Mm -hmm. That's even to the to the the the, the 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 belief that I have now. There are times when I have to review it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand? Because yeah. there's nothing cast in stone. Exactly, exactly. You will we will preach through different sermons from one yeah, scripture. Yeah, yeah. That alone says to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The revelation is not that real revelation we so often know, but it'll be an enhanced and more in-depth revelation. You might yeah. go deeper in the Greek, the Hebrew, the Arabic, yeah. all over, and find deeper truth. But it happened throughout the gospel. The same story, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but they had different angles of being able to explain it. That is the reality. We're coming back after the news, Shana Tobago. Don't touch your dial. Stay right here. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of this street. 919 FM. The deals are at East Side Plaza, located at number 32 Shannon Street in Port of Spain. It's a sale on everything.